Hey guys, so today I want to talk with you about the 8 new uniques that we got from the Howling Peaks DLC. It is 4 armors, 2 bows and 2 melee weapons. Now first I want to have a look at all of these without any enchantments so that we can just see the plain strength of these items and then we will go over some enchantment options. And at the end of this video I will tell you where you can find all of these items. So in order to test things out I decided that we go into the Moo level, first on Apocalypse plus 1 because we don't have any enchantments on our items just to have a look at the plain value of these items. So the first things we are going to test is the Resolute Tempest Knife. It has an increased damage to wounded mobs and it has a speed burst after the mob is defeated. Now actually this works really well, I like these weapons, but we will go over that later. Then we have the Gilded Glory, it has a chance to spawn emeralds when exploring, it can spend emeralds to cheat death, and you have a 25% increased melee attack speed, which really synergizes well with the weapons. And then we have the Burst Gale Bow. In my eyes this is the better bow, because after you roll, you get a 1 second where all your arrows are charged. And you can see that when we walk, we collect some emeralds here and there, which all go to the Death Barter enchantment and not to our emerald count. Now let's hit some of these enemies, and you can see the speed burst going up. That's actually pretty nice. Okay, let's have a look at the bow. Pulls in multiple enemies at once, not just the one enemy that you hit. And after rolling, all your arrows are charged for one second. So now, before we switch the items, I want to talk about the death barter, because once this effect triggers, it will be reset, so you can collect another 150 emeralds and you will get another revive. Now, the way that works is that if you would die, it basically just puts an invulnerability shield around you, restores some of your health, and you can just keep playing. It's not like the normal death where you respawn, because this is instant. So let's have a look at other weapons. Let's put on the chill gale knife, this also slows enemies, and in my opinion this is a little bit better, because you can get a full level committed on it. Let's also put the opulent armor here. Now this also has a chance uh, to find emeralds when exploring and you get the melee attack speed bonus. But this one comes with the invulnerability on emerald collection. Now this is the enchantment that I talked about with you in my last data mine video and we came to the conclusion already that it isn't that great but let's give it another chance. And then we have the echo of the valley. Again charged arrows pull in enemies and you have a chance to ricochet. And you can see on lower apocalypse levels, because you're killing enemies pretty quickly, the invulnerability shield is up for quite some time, but each individual shield only lasts for a very short time. So you can see the shield is just really short of duration. And the fun thing with these bows is that you can pull enemies over the edge and kill them by that. Now here on the elites you can see the slow effect of the chill gale knife as well. So now as we are done with all the weapons we are just focusing on the armors. So we have first the goat gear that gives you an extra roll, 25% cooldown reduction and pushback resistance. So as we equip it you can see that we got a second charge for the roll here. And that's already all there is to talk about this. So let's go and try out the rugged climbing gear. Now this one again has the 25% artifact cooldown and pushback resistance, but comes with freezing resistance and environmental damage resistance. So this is really good for maps where you face environmental damage. Um, I don't think that this will be too useful on pretty much all maps. Like it's, it's just too situational for me. Um, also, I want to mention about this armor here that this armor seems to be bugged because I found a couple ones and friends of mine found all also some of these and they seem to not spawn with the yellow markings here or orange markings that indicate unique effects. So as I have said before I don't think that um, the armors are really useful but still I think that the rock climbing gear and the goat armor because of their cooldown reduction pair pretty well with the cooldown reduction builds. Things like multi-roll or swift footed could be nice as well. Now especially on the goat gear because you get an extra roll, acrobat, things like electrified or fire trail are really nice but still also a cooldown here because you still have the cooldown reduction. For armors like the opulent armor, I'm thinking that because you have the invulnerability on emerald collection, you can also go with death barter here with an extra life boost and maybe with potion barrier and do some really heavily defensive build with this one. So that might work because it protects you more often. If you really die and lose a life, you get even more health when you come back. To not die, you have potion barrier and your emerald collection invulnerability, but I still don't think it will be useful on higher apocalypse levels, but just for 
for the sake of trying it out, I will enchant this one and we will actually use it in a second. Then we have the Gilded Glory. Now this one can spend emeralds to cheat death, which is basically the death barter. For the rolls I have here, they're pretty bad. I would go with life boost, deflect and protection. Because I don't have another option here. But yeah, this is not an armor that I would ever use. I just don't think that this armor is good enough. So the only armor that you might be able to use is the opulent armor here. So we are back at the cow level on Apocalypse plus 20. This time using the opulent armor, um, everything else is still unchanged. So let's just see how well it does in a normal build. Of course, we get a lot of healing from our cursed axe and the anima conduit bow. But then again, you're missing cooldown to keep up the death cap mushroom. The 25% attack speed does help, but it's never a good sign if you drop low already on the cow level. So let's see, we have some elites coming up here. And as we are slowed, we basically have troubles with attacking at all. And there we go. So yeah, as I did say in the data mine video already, the emerald shield is not too great. Now I think a way of fixing the emerald shield would be that each emerald that you collect, like if you collect 11 emeralds, it would stack up the duration of the shield. That way it could actually be working, but the way it is now, I don't have much hope for this enchantment. So here I have the chill gale knife that slows mobs and in my opinion this is the better one of the two weapons. I would naturally go with committed and critical hit over everything else. Even though they were swirling I believe um, because you get the speed burst after defeating mobs and this is what I would aim for so committed and critical hit are the things that I definitely want on it. For the third enchantment I'm not too sure because sharpness actually stacks with critical hit and committed so it increases the damage overall um, but also some leeching might be nice for some survival but just for the sake of big numbers, I'm going sharpness here. I mean, you can see we kill these enemies pretty quickly. Even though the cows have really a lot of HP, we can kill them pretty quickly. But also we just don't have enough healing here. So I would definitely recommend you to use some life leech. Now the same way, let's have a look at the Resolute Tempest Knife. Here I definitely go for Shockwave because we have the built-in committed already and having mobs that are already damaged will benefit this weapon and so we just have a wider reach for this. Here I would naturally also go critical hit but I want to see how much we are affected by leeching. And then let's just go exploding. Now also for this weapon we're going to play on the cow level on Apocalypse plus 20. As you can see Shockwave works quite nice with this weapon because we are attacking pretty fast so our combo is over really quickly. And I think with leeching and explosion that actually works pretty well. But also if you don't play carefully you can get surrounded and taken down really quickly. I think the lesson that we can learn from this one is that we need healing on our weapon for Apocalypse plus 20. Okay, and now let's have a look at the bows. So we have the Echo of the Valley with the chance to ricochet. The thing is that naturally you could think that chain reaction is be really good on this one, but the arrows spawned by chain reaction are not charged arrows, so you won't get the effect of pulling enemies there. So I will just go with Tempo Theft here, but I will definitely take Supercharge, because with this one we just do more damage with our charged arrows and we have to charge them anyways. And then we just go power for a little more damage. Now as you can see on higher apocalypse, enemies aren't really affected by the pulling effect of these bows. I believe this is due to the increased knockback resistance that mobs get on higher apocalypse difficulties, as the pull effect works just fine on lower apocalypse levels. And sadly this negates everything that makes these bows special, and they become just normal bows. And it goes without saying that this is not very useful. So next up I want to try out the Burst Gale Bow. Now because here we have the um, rolling charges your next arrow, which as we, as we talked about you just roll once and two arrows are charged, I want to put on this bow the Burst Bowstring, because we are rolling anyway so it's just more arrows to be shot. Uh, we go multi-shot because that actually works with charged arrows. And then we just go piercing. But then again, this bow also loses his unique ability due to the resistance of enemies against knockback on higher apocalypse. So I would not recommend you to use this one either. Now here's a slowed down clip of me using this enchantment with burst bowstring just so that you can see that it doesn't really work on these zombies either. And then I went to Obsidian Pinnacle again, just to check if you can still pull enemies over the edges and kill them. And yes, that still works, but as you can see, the amount of pull you get on these enemies is really, really low. So it's nothing I'd really recommend using. 
So now let's talk about where you can find these items in the game. So the Chill Gale Knife and the Resolute Tempest Knife are the unique variants of the Tempest Knife. And this one you can find on the Windswept Peaks. As you can see here is the Tempest Knife. On the Gale Sanctum you also can get the Tempest Knife. And on the Colossal Rampart you can also get the Tempest Knife. So in all three of these levels you can get your hands on these weapons. Then we have the Bows, Echo of the Valley, Burst Gale Bow. You can see on the Windswept Peaks we don't have the Bow here. But on the Gale Sanctum we have the Wind Bow. And on the Colossal Rampart part we also have the wind bow. Now for the armors the gilded glory and the opulent armor you want to look out for the emerald gear and here again it is not here on the windswept peaks but it is on the gale sanctum over here and on the colossal rampart over here and then we only have left the rugged climbing gear and the goat gear you guessed it you will also find this one only on the uh, new dlc maps you will not find it on the gale sanctum but you can find it on the windswept peaks and on the colossal rampart over here. Now to be honest, I'm not really impressed by most of these items. The only real ones I could see working are the two knives and you need to have some form of healing on them. If it's life leech or if it's uh, radiance, anything could work. But I think you have to have some healing for higher apocalypse levels. Everything else, I think it's kind of up to your taste if you want to do single target damage or if you want to go more the AOE route. I personally like the Resolute Tempest Knife with this combination more, but I think that maybe this one is still better with the slowing to mobs, but it needs different enchantments than what I put on here. Let's talk in general about enchantments. So in general I think enchantments like Shockwave, Swirling, Leeching, Exploding, Critical Hit, Committed, Rampaging could also work really well on this item, and I think that's about it. Now for the armors, I don't really know what kind of enchantments you could put on there to make them work. I think they are more like gimmicky. The goat gear with the extra roll could benefit from enchantments like Acrobat, Fire Trail and Electrified. But yeah, as I said, I'm not really sure about these armors. Maybe some cooldown reduction and some swift footed or speed synergy could work, but I am not too sure about that. And finally, let's talk about the bows here. I have a weird feeling about these as I noticed that the pulling enemies is not that great on higher difficulties anymore. And also their damage is, well, it's, it's not really that great. So I'm not thinking that they are really useful. If one is useful, I think it's the burst gale bow because the rolling synergizes well with burst bowstring and dynamo or such. But to be honest, I don't think that these bows are quite good. So to sum everything up, the knives are quite nice and I could see them being used here and there. The armors are in my eyes pretty useless and the same goes for the bows because they are countered by just the difficulty itself. Now I do like the overall design of these items and the theme that they were going with but I feel like these items are just not as good as they could be. And if you didn't see that already you should definitely check out the stuff about the new chills and thrills event coming up in just three days. I'll link the videos about that in the description. Now as that is all for today I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!